Now, uh, near-death experiences, furthermore, can be induced by drugs, electrical shocks, uh, ex uh, acceleration, pilots being uh, trained for a high G in a centrifuge will, will experience them. They have the properties of hallucinations, uh, and they can uh, induce, be also induced by stimulating specific pl places in the brain. Finally, this is a point that I, I didn't know until I started looking into this, because most people assume that flat EEG means brain death, means the brain is, is totally non-functional. Well, it turns out that that's not true. It's just the, uh, maybe there's people here who are smarter than me on this, but correct me if I'm wrong, but what, as I understand it, it's just from the outer layers of the brain, uh, unless you, pet, you put a big implant in the EEG uh, probe, you, you won't uh, there still can be activity in the lower uh, lower parts of the brain. So uh, it's it's not the people who undergo these experiences did not have, have necessarily have brain death. Okay, so nothing about near death experiences can be used to demonstrate the existence of an afterlife. Now let me say a few words about uh, the recent claims of scientific evidence for reincarnation. This mainly comes from the work of a psychiatrist at the University of Virginia, Professor E. Stevenson, who uh, died in 2007. Now, he collected thousands of cases of children recalling details from past lives, mostly in India and other cultures that uh, believe in, in, in uh, reincarnation. Now, independent investigations have indicated that the children could have known about the person they claimed to be in a previous life who were usually from the same or nearby village. Uh, now why would the children make up stories, Stevenson uh, asked. Uh, now it turned out that many were motivated to improve their status in society, for example, to show they belonged to a higher caste, or they uh, desired to become religious celebrities, which is a common occurrence in India for children who appear to be especially anointed. So there was reasons. Independent analyses of Stevenson's data uh, by experts did not find a single case with convincing evidence of the thousand. So, summarizing, uh, the Judeo-Christian Islamic God can be scientifically shown not to exist beyond a reasonable doubt by the absence of evidence that should be there, but is not. There should be evidence that he reveals truths to humans, there is none. There should be evidence that he answers prayers, there is none. There should be evidence for design in nature, there is none. There should be evidence of a miraculous creation, there is none. Nothing in the world of science requires us to introduce God or the supernatural to explain anything we observe in the universe. Uh, science has adequate models to at least provide plausible natural explanations uh, for fundamental questions such as the origin of the universe, origin of complexity, parent fine tuning. Uh, parameters of physics, reduction of complexity from simplicity, nature consciousness. There's no convincing scientific evidence for life after death. <clears throat> now it's true that God could uh, deliberately hide from us if he wanted to, not making his presence known to all the selected few. That's certainly an uh, evangelical belief. But that would be an evil God, an immoral God who dooms everyone but his favorites to everlasting torment. The good God would not do that, and the very fact there are non-believers in the world proves that such a God does not exist. Finally, suppose I'm wrong, and on the day of judgment, I am called to answer for myself. Here's what I plan to tell God. <laughs> How dare you ask me, God, to justify my life, you who created a world in which you have imposed great suffering on your creatures. You who sent earthquakes and tsunamis to kill, not terrorists or test pops or child abusers, but instead hundreds of thousands of the poorest, most underprivileged people in the world. You kill thousands of children every day from hunger. You refuse to relieve the suffering of the dying. You force animals kill each other to survive. And you didn't have to do this, God. With your infinite power, you could have made the universe a universe with no pain or death. The universe you created is surely vast enough. 
If you loved humans so much, why didn't you confide us to this tiny planet? You could have made it so we could live anywhere, even in space. All this was within your power, your control, I mean, your God after all. So I say it's, it's you, God, who added everything to answer for. Thanks very much. <laughs>